Hey everybody, congratulations on buying a new Buddy 170. I'm just gonna go over really quickly how everything works. So we'll start with the keys. You get two of them, they both do the same thing. Keep one in a safe place. There's only one place to put the key on the scooter and it's right here, but this switch does multiple things. There are three positions, there's locked, off and on. There is also a seat opening function. To lock the steering column, you turn the handlebar to the left and then without pushing this key in, you turn it to the left over to the lock position. The steering column is locked. There's also in the off position, you can remove the key. The steering will still move. So it's best when you park the scooter to lock the steering and it's a little more theft proof. Turn the key to the on position to start the scooter. From any of these positions, you'll notice it can go in just a little bit. You push it in just a little bit and turn to the left, that opens the seat. Under here you have your gas cap, which you push this button to open. When you fill it, push the nozzle in, down in there, and when it shuts off, it'll shut off by itself and your tank will be full. To put the gas cap back on, press around the rim, just like that. This little connection is for a diagnostic port, so that just covers that, keeps the dirt out. In here, you've got your storage compartment. You can hang a helmet by the D-ring from either or both of these posts. When you close the seat, the helmet will be outside, but it will be um, secured to the bike. So you can also keep a large breed dog or a watermelon or something under here, whatever you want. Don't do that. To close the seat, rather than slamming it down, just drop it down gently and then press right here, and that will latch it. When you're ready to start the scooter, all the controls are with your fingertips. Over here, this is a kill switch. This is for shutting the engine off in an emergency. The federal government requires that you can turn off a motorcycle without taking your hand off the control. Normally, you would just turn it off here with the key, but if you ever want to, you can kill the engine there. This switch is four-way flashers. And right here is the starter. So to start the engine, you squeeze one of the brakes and push this button. Here on the left side, you've got the high and low beam with a corresponding indicator to tell you when your high beam is on. In the United States, motorcycle headlights are required to be on all the time, so whenever the engine's running, the headlight will be on. You have turn signals. For these, you just push the direction you're going to turn. There's a little indicator on the dashboard to tell you the signal's on, as well as the audible click. And to turn it off, you just push this white button, and that turns off the turn signal. Horn is right here. This is your left hand brake. That stops the um, rear wheel. The right side brake stops the front wheel. And then you twist here to accelerate. The uh, front brake provides most of your stopping power, so use them both. Um, times you'd want to be careful with the front brake are if the roads are slippery or gravelly, anywhere that you might skid. Um, you'd want to ease up on the front wheel, but generally speaking, the front brake is your more powerful, powerful and effective brake. Another cool feature on the Buddy 170 is that there's a little USB outlet right here. You can charge up a cell phone, and if you like, you can keep the cell phone in here in the glove box. I would be cautious. The, the back side of these rivets that hold the information label on are kind of sharp. If you have a cell phone, put it in here in a way that is not vulnerable to scratching the screen or other things. Speaking of this label, this label does have some important information, including the tire pressure, which is 26 in the front and the rear. That's the recommended tire pressure for this vehicle. You can fine tune that a little bit for your liking. I usually run about 30 to 35 in the rear and about 30 in the front on my own scooters but typically following the manufacturer's recommendation will give you the best tire life. Your VIN number is right here if your insurance company needs to know. There's also a VIN number engraved in the frame underneath this little cover that can be unsnapped. To get the scooter on and off the stand, um, that's what I'm going to show you next. Right now it's sitting on the center stand, which is more secure. Um, it's less likely to tip over. So it's a good idea to use this stand generally. Um, it's easy to use. To get it off the stand, the scooter needs to roll forward. So you can either straddle it and push forward on the handlebars, or you can grab on the side here and roll it forward, whatever you're comfortable with. Once it's off the stand, um, of course you need to hold it up. 
to put it back on the stand, you want to step down on this lever and just push down with downward force. You don't need to pull back on the handlebars, just steady it and step down here. It does also have a kickstand that it can lean on. So if you want to, you can park it this way and lean it on that stand. That's it. If you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call or send an email to service at thescooterlounge.com. Thanks.